Okay, which one are we playing this week then? So today I thought we'd play Joust for the Atari 2600. So this is an arcade port released for the system in 1983 based on an arcade game from 1982. It was made by Williams, who were sort of famous for making Defender and Robotron in the arcades. Mm. Have you got any experience with the game at all? I've played it a little bit, but I've got more... More experience with Balloon Fight. Yeah, it's a very similar game, really. Similar. Do you want to get to it then? Yeah, let's go for it. So the game is two players, so me and Chris will both both play simultaneous. Right, so Chris just killed me. But, um, He's had some points, baby. So the aim of the game is to basically kill all of the opponents, and you do that by landing on their heads. And after you've whacked them, they turn into eggs, which you've got to collect. If you don't collect the eggs in time, then the um, uh, then it just sort of rehatches into the enemy. Ah! To fly, you've got to tap the button as well, so you sort of control the wings basically. So the faster you tap in the, um, <laughs> it's going to try and turn around and take you out. Yeah, but you oh! Straight into the lava. That's not <laughs> lava. Who is brown lava? <laughs> seriously. Oh, I couldn't get up there. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> no! <laughs> Obviously, you can kill the other player as well. It gives you more points. But now I am dead, and Rich <laughs> yeah. can just gain points all he likes, so he wins. Yep, pretty much. Usually there's actually a lot more enemies than this, but when you put on two players, it actually cuts down the amount of enemies that mm. can be appearing on the screen. So obviously when the second player's dead, it gets a bit too easy. Ooh. So from what I understand, this game sort of came out as a result of the, um, the success of Defender, basically. Oh, blast. So basically, after um, Defender, they sort of expanded their video game in operations. They um, hired a lot of new people to sort of start new projects. This was one of the results of that expansion. So they hired this guy, John Newcomer, I think his name was. And he'd previously been in the toy industry, sort of making board games and such. From what I understand, he'd, he'd sort of uh, decided that video games were the future. And he'd... Uh, Left the toy of business. You ready? Yep, let's go. And from what I understand, uh, Williams weren't actually very happy with the game when it was made. They didn't think it was going to do very well at all. They thought it was sort of a bit too complicated, the, the button tapping. So this game was sort of... A, ah. Oh, what a double whammy! This was a big unexpected hit in the end. They thought it would do terrible, and in the end it actually did very well. Oh, I turned them away. Not again. Stop! Oi! <laughs> I, <laughs> know, I know your game. I don't know what you mean. Oh, okay. Poacher. My thumb's really hurting. Good. <laughs> I, can't ke I can't keep up in the air. <laughs> I'm annihilating you, Lewis. Uh, oh, oh, I'm goodness. out. Oh, he's going to come back. And there he is. Yeah. Just so the uh, viewers at home can see what that's like. <laughs> yeah. I think they need another demonstration. I reckon this game must have had quite a bit of influence on Nintendo as well, actually. You reckon? I mean, well, obviously, like we mentioned, Balloon Fight earlier is basically the same game, isn't it? It certainly is. But um, even the original Mario Brothers, you know, the arcade game, has a lot of similarities to this when you think about it, doesn't it? Yep. Not only is it sort of two players, you know, clearing the screen of enemies, but you've got this two-stage way of defeating them as well. So on Mario Brothers, you sort of you got to flip the turtles first and then knock them off, don't you? Mm. And if you take too long to kick them, they sort of reassert themselves and come back again. So obviously that's sort of somewhat similar to the two-stage way you defeat these, where you've got to collect the egg before it sort of rehatches them again, you know. Some of the way that the physics feel of you, of you skidding around the ground kind of feel like Mario Brothers as well, don't they? Mm. You know? It's quite interesting, really, because they're quite different games in a lot of ways. Oh. But you can see some influence there. Yeah, definitely.
Oh, that was stupid. I went up into you. Shh. Ah, oh. oh, bounced off the wall into you. I missed it. I missed it again. I oh, bounced off the ceiling. And I've turned it to you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, you sort of bounce your head on the top of the screen, don't you? So it usually ends up with you Underneath. being lower than the other player. No! No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> 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 Uh, God, my thumb is killing me now. <laughs> oh God, just kill me! Kill me! <laughs> kill me now! <laughs> Not Predator! Done. Okay, Rich, so what do you think of the game? This is a cool game, isn't it? Especially on two players. I think that's where this game really shines, actually. You're sort of trying to stay above each other, you know? You're trying to get the, a better position on the screen, really, aren't you? Control the area. Yeah. You know, keep them under. So you can just take them out as soon as they try and like lift their head up out of the, uh, you know, lift their head above ground kind of thing. Mm. But um, physics-wise, it's quite kind of interesting, I guess. There's a little bit more here than in a lot of these sorts of games. The way that you, you skid around, don't you? You run along the floor and you skid backwards and mm -hmm. such. You've got that. You've got the, the motion of the flying as well, which is a little bit more in depth than the controls of a lot of games from this sort of time period. Yeah, definitely. It's not just a case of push left and you go left on this. You, you know, you got you got to keep a rhythm going. Uh, graphically, it's not amazing for an Atari game. I think just about anything from Activision was better than this. Really, from this sort of time period, it's mm. sort of, but it's functional, isn't it? Like mm. a lot of Atari games, it's functional. You can sort of tell what everything is. Got these cool sort of ostriches. I mean, really, the animation's not terrible either. No. Like, when you think about it. You know, the birds flapping and such, and the way that they run along the ground as well. You know, kind of sort of comedic. It's kind of cool. Sort of like ostriches, aren't they? Mm. So it's, it's not amazing presentation-wise, but the gameplay, I think, is pretty good. It's it's sort of a shame that um, when you put on two players, it limits the amount of enemy sprites so much, though. But yeah, but what can you do? It's an Atari, you know. It's not yeah. that powerful. So what do you reckon then? You've played it a few times, haven't you, in the past? You know, I really enjoy it. I, I, I do I agree with you totally. It does shine in the two-player aspect. That is definitely far more fun than playing one player. Yeah. Um, you know me, I'm hyper-competitive, <laughs> and you're nearly as, as as competitive as I am. So when you stick this kind of game... I don't think on, anyone's as competitive as you. Well, <laughs> maybe not. But... Um, yeah, no, it's just a, a super fun experience, especially when you're flapping around and you think that, oh, God, he's going to land on my head, but then you miss, and then yeah. you turn around and you hit them on the head, and then they die, and you're like, ah, take Rebound that. off of a platform yeah, or yeah. something. Or you bounce, you know, they're escape. trying to get above you, but they hit their head on the imaginary ceiling and bounce yeah. back down, which leaves them in prime position for you just to knock them on the head, which is good, good fun, really yeah. good fun. Um, graphically, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an Atari. I don't think it's fair to just say, well, it's the Atari, so I expect bad graphics, because I think that there are there is a spectrum of graphics that you would get on an Atari during this time period. Mm. You can get some games that are quite colourful. Frogger came out a year earlier than this, and that game looks better, I'd say. And Dig mm. Dug definitely looks a lot better than this. That came out the same year as this, you know. Mm. I think they actually just covered the, the, the job, really, didn't they? Yeah. That, that's what all they're there for, is to make sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, Richard, what are you going to score it then? Well, we've talked about a few other games from the same time period. Obviously, you've got Spectrum and C64 games out as well. You've got Attic Attack on Spectrum. You've got games like Beachhead, which had on C64. That had a lot more variety in the mm. gameplay styles. Some of these newer computer games, you know, a bit more in-depth. You've also got games like Dig Dug on the Atari that had better graphics. Mm. Even some of Activision's games as well from a year previous were sort of a little bit more advanced than this. But the two-player mode is like a fantastic addition, and it sort of raises it above the average quite a bit. I oh think. yeah. But it's still reasonable fun on one player, but the two-player mode is where it's at. And sort of the physics feel quite advanced for the time as well. You know the way that you skid along the ground, yeah. where you got to flap your wings. There's a lot of room for flair in the controls mm. for such a simple game, you know. And I think yeah. that that should be uh, mentioned. So with that in mind, I'm going to give the game a four out of five. What score are you going to give it then? Well, 
I mean, for all the aforementioned reasons, it, it doesn't have the best graphics. It it doesn't look the best or sound the best, but that gameplay. Yeah. That gameplay is amazing. It's great. I mean, you said it, it holds up well for 1983. We've played it today, and we've really enjoyed ourselves, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. It's, so it's it, it holds game. up. I think my kids would really enjoy this, and I think everybody who can hold that yeah. controller and not get hand cramp yeah. after about four minutes could really enjoy this game. So for that matter, I'm going to give it a four as well. Okay, guys, that's Joust for this week. Absolutely wonderful game. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a classic, really, of the era. Yeah, good, great fun. So, guys, if you liked it, give us a like. Tell us what you think by giving us a comment. And subscribe to the channel, because we always are making great new content like this. And we will see you next week with another game, guys. Take care. See ya.